Hello my soccer universe to the Premier League Eredivisie review of the weekend just before the international break in November. Well, it was a weekend that was overshadowed I think by two matchups, namely the Everton United where all the vultures were already circling around the United roost in a way and of course the big one uh, City against Liverpool, I call it the current Classico because it is in my opinion this is at the moment the most exciting game out there and it was exciting but then in the, in the end it was also a little bit of a letdown so yeah uh we'll talk about that and yeah in the end we have a new leader in the premier league we have uh, another team that i counted for that that might come up so let's look what happened i saw only highlights from the premier league I, again i couldn't really watch much of the eredivisie it will get better i promise um i and of course i am wearing uh, old school Chelsea jersey, there's Gianfranco Zola back there, so yeah, uh, nice jersey for this video because as you will see Chelsea got a big win themselves. Let's get started, Let, let's look what happened in the league. We, uh, Brighton, Burnley, yeah, was early chances then, it was done and does it. We, the first game I really want to talk about is Southampton against Newcastle because Southampton had the chance for the first time ever to be top of the uh, Premier League table, um, although only uh, temporarily but at least hey that's uh, history right there that, that you can make and given that they have an Austrian coach I always say they have the most ridiculous crest although I'm warming up, uh, uh, up, up to it but everything above the tree I just find ridiculous to be honest um, but yeah uh, high pressing style that Ralf Hausmittel is bringing to uh, Southampton and they it, at least against uh, uh, you know not the top, top, top teams that they really can cause problems. And it was Theo Volkot. I mean, the, the Newcastle thought they had already saved the CC situation, but then they pressed again and Volkot makes in, uh, crosses in and Adams uh, makes in seventh minute one nil. Uh, Volkot himself could have um, uh, widened the gap, but they needed a long time to get in there when Armstrong made it two nil and Southampton really gets that one win. Um, and then we already had the first big one, Everton against United. You know, uh, two Liverpool against Manchester matchups in this round. I should have said this before. Um, and everyone, you know, the knives were out for Solskjaer after the defeat in Istanbul. Yeah, they really didn't look good. But again, now he was playing a side with Everton that was a little, wanted to have the ball, wanted to be a little bit more free-flowing and so on. Um, and for that reason, uh, you would expect immediately a little bit more from them. Everton was the better team and took a, a lead th in the 19th through Bernard, but then uh, Bruno Fernandes took only seven times to turn the game around in between. Um, uh, there was also a big chance for Everton, but the first one was, uh, from Fernandes came uh, after a cross by Shaw, headed it in. The second one, um, yeah, it was a cross that uh, Rashford did not get to and so it's 2-1 United and that's exactly what they needed. Uh, Everton tries but really cannot find a breakthrough and in the end it's Cavani deep in stoppage time assisted by a, a financial who I think gets his first United goal. It still seems odd to me that um, Cavani is playing in red. I think I've only ever seen him in, in blue jerseys, uh, at least mainly. I think for PSG he probably played in a red jersey here and there, but it still seems odd to me. Uh, but yeah, uh, he gets the goal and a United a vital win. I have to say though, there was a foul in there by Fernand where he probably should have walked with a yellow red, my, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, and Angelotti I think lost now three in a row. This is he's not used to that either. So uh, bright start for Everton, and now they come crashing down. So uh, I really hope they get uh, to you know the stay set themselves and at least stay top six because I think Everton would deserve that. Uh, Crystal Palace completely surprising Leeds United. Leeds United getting, as I said already last week, getting a little bit found out as as well, and also this intense style and. Uh, Yes, they don't have to play European com com competitions, but you know, a little bit more breaks in there would probably help them too. So yeah, um, 
was not their day. Uh, they had a, a goal ruled out because the arm was a little bit stretched out. It would have been the 1-1. One, one. So yeah, uh, but a nice free kick in there as well. Same scoreline for Chelsea against Sheffield United, but the first thing was that McGoldrick uh, gets the lead for Sheffield United, which is, I think, the first goal that uh, Mendy and Chelsea are conceding uh, since he joined. However, other than that, Chelsea looked, yes, it was only Sheffield United, looked, but looked re uh, defensively relatively sound and going forward uh, really irre irresistible in many ways. Especially Hakim Ziyech is uh, becoming the big orchestrator uh, and, you know, having uh, Thiago Silva now getting back in shape and actually being able to organize the defense also might actually play huge dividends for him. So the goal came then from uh, uh, Tam Abraham after this by Kovacic born in Linz, my hometown. Uh, then Ziyech uh, assists Jillwell to make it 2-1. Two, uh, two and then um, in the second half, many chances for Chelsea, but they leave it late. And again, it's Hakim Ziyech with a free kick onto Thiago Silva's head. And then uh, Ngolo Kante assists uh, Timo Werner, who gets his kind of mandatory goal. Uh, and it ends with 4-1 and Chelsea, I have to say, a uh, few, week, few weeks, especially before the internet, the previous international break, Chelsea looked like a shambles, uh, but now that they have Monty in there and they look defensively more sound, they went back kind of, kind of, kind of to basics to solid, solidify the defense and they're suddenly churning out results. Uh, I don't want to anoint them anything yet, but um, they are looking better and better. I still have the feeling that it might come crashing down at one point, but let's see, let's see um, where we will end up. Um, we had West Ham United, a very late winner, so Suchek, and then Fulham even had the chance with a penalty, which probably was one of the worst penalties you have seen this season. Uh, winning 1-0, Spurs also with a late win through Harry Kane, yes, more chances. I think they also had, had a goal ruled out, but yeah. A late win. Leicester uh, beats Wolves thanks to a Vardy penalty. Um, handball uh, penalty. Uh, Vardy then misses a penalty, or better say, Rui Patricio saves it. Uh, and then the ball falls back back on him and in, in, in a weird way that it goes uh, over, over the goal. But Leicester also um, kind of backing up what they promised last season, where uh, at first you thought, yeah, where Leicester doesn't look all that well, and suddenly, hmm. Can we see another challenge for the Champions League spots? Maybe we can. I think Leicester, among the, I still think among the non-top six, Leicester is the one that's um, very well led, and uh, they always uh, turn out a good squad. And then City against Liverpool, where I think the biggest question ahead, ahead of the game was not, not only, yeah, we have shaky defenses, maybe this will be a goal fest, but what will Klopp do? Will he play Firmino or uh, Diego Jota? No. He played them both in a formation that was attacking a 4-2-4 and defending uh, the two outside came, I think, Jota and um, uh, Firmino came kind of, uh, no, uh, what was Mane, who fell back in the 4-4-2 and keeping the defensive lines really, really, really close to make it really hard for Manchester City to attack. And it worked like a charm at the beginning. I think City, you you was in a pregame in the interview. Uh, Guardiola did not expect it. He was kind of nervous about the whole thing. And City really needed a while to get going. Um, there was a claim for, uh, for a foul on Sterling, which, yeah, maybe. But I think it was, was right. It was not, not given. And then right from, from that, um, Mane is brought down in the box by Kyle Walker and Mohamed Salah steps up, converts the penalty, which was the only converted penalty I saw on Sunday uh, live in the third, third minutes. And I thought, yeah, Liverpool looked good. They then, in, in a way, relied on their newfound defensive structure uh, and City had to find back into the game. And honestly, it took City a while to adjust to that. Um, but when Kevin De Bruyne plays a through ball to Gabriel Jesus, uh, there was a real nice dummy run by Gundogan who takes Matip away, so Gabriel Jesus has a little bit more space, can turn around, toe pokes in the net in the 31st. And note, Mohammed and Jesus both scored. Very religious match right there. Um, the game remained rather open, rather interesting, and kind of intense as well, but you know, 
the two coaching genius a little bit ca ca canceling each other out, but uh, City got a grip of what Klopp was doing. And then uh, cross in, in the box on Alexander Arnold's uh, arm. He, you see he tries to pull, pull away, but when I saw the, re the replay, I, I thought this got to be a penalty. It was a penalty. Um, and De Bruyne steps up and misses. He wanted to be extra, extra <laughs> um, uh, exact and puts it past uh, the goal. And you can see he looked in disbelief. Second half, then suddenly everything died down. I think the first half was raw run hands. Very interesting tool to watch. But second half died down. And uh, I think there was a header by Gabriel Je Jesus. But the moment Alexander Arnold kind of uh, got a muscle in injury and had to be taken off, I think this is the moment when I had the feeling both teams, yes, they were tired, but both teams kind of decided, yeah, that's enough. 1-1, one, one. it's just good for both, both of us. Maybe a little bit better for, Li for Liverpool, but you know, if you get a 1-1, one, one, still we have lots to play. Uh, we can uh, Let's play for the title at Anfield if we even get that far. And then it ended in a rather boring 1-1. One, one. I think if the halves were exchanged, I think we would have talked about the exciting game. So it was an exciting first half, second half, yeah. And that the kids were playing crazy during the game, although I told them this was the one game that I really, really, really needed to watch added to that letdown feeling. And then in the evening, Aston Villa completely destroyed Arsenal um, with a nice game, game, game plan, taking away the um, wingers from our Arsenal, um, blocking them out of the, of, of the game, staying defensive south, hitting them count, count, counter attack. Uh, they had a goal already <laughs> allowed for all, or did this allowed in the first minute, but Saka's own goal, yeah, that was Trey, Trey Zegi, that was already very well played. I mean, uh, with Grealish and um, uh, Barkley, they really have uh, this special something in there. And uh, they both had a uh, part to play in, 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 in the build-up to this own goal. Arsenal tried, but it was rather uh, timid and, you know, not very convincing. And then it's two Oli Watkins goals. The first one, uh, the assist by Barkley, who uh, a deep ball, he takes directly out of the air onto Watkins' head. That was a, a, a beauty. And then what Grealish did with a solo sol run, where he basically gets even better Bellerin out, out of the way, plays it to, to Watkins, uh, who, who, who can make it 2-0. That was a size side to ball. I have, I have to say, Aston Villa is a really exciting side to watch. They're just not always uh, there. I mean, when, you, when I saw them against Leeds United, the Grealish was a little bit too self selfish. But when he can play for the team, I think they're a really, really good side to watch. And with all that, we get to the latest standings. We have a new leader in Leicester City ahead of Spurs. Um, so I have been telling you, Spurs, not exciting, but the, getting results done and Leicester City also. Uh, two, two losses, but six wins. That's pretty impressive. I mean, Liverpool hang in there. They have played City. Yes, Leicester has two. So um, that's even. And Southampton in the top four. Chelsea moving also slowly up. Aston Villa is going back up. And uh, Everton now is kind of, kind of a down, downward slope. Um, have in mind that Manchester City has still... Um, a game in hand and if I just take every average points at the moment would be seventh and with a win in this game um, I don't know now exactly against whom it is uh, but, they, but they would have 15 points and they would be right there with Villa and, and Chelsea so I mean uh, Manchester City looks worse than they are uh, the record of Arsenal with 404 I find rather re remarkable uh, either you win or you lose and we still have three teams that have not won with West Brom, Burnley and Sheffield United Curiously, Fulham is in there um, as among the teams to be relegated together with West Brom, but Burnley and Sheffield United, two teams that have been doing quite well as, as of late, they look in danger and don't look all that well. In the area Divisie, as I said, I didn't see anything. I saw that, that Ajax beat Utrecht 3-0. Um, uh, For me, though, the result that uh, I want to circle is Venlo against uh, Heracles. Venlo lost two weeks ago 13-0 to Ajax at home and now they are again back to, win, to to winning ways this is not normal it seems like they just said okay yeah ajax 
done and dusted. Fenop is calling in 2 0 and Vitesse against M and 3 1. Vitesse is a team, uh, also an informed team. PSV gets a 3 0 over Willem Dway. Kind of a local club in the Northern Derby AZ. Uh, beats here in vain. So in the table, uh, the top three stay the same, kind of a little bit separates them together with uh, uh, Feyenoord. And as I said, if you look at Venlo, there, if you take out the Ajax game, there's nothing extraordinary. It's their average mid-table team, but their goal difference is minus 13. That's the 13 Ajax, is go Ajax goals. And just look how the goal difference is completely destroyed by this 1-13-0 result, because the 27, <laughs> everything, a uh, plus 14 looks like nothing at the moment in here. So yeah, that's from the Netherlands. In both leagues, I, I know who are the next games, but I have to... The scheduling, I'm not sure because the primary always pulls a trick on me. They decide the TV games uh, uh, typically after I make these videos. And in the Netherlands, also not quite set, so I don't have anything for that yet. Let me know what you thought about the games this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.